What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. I'm Rhett Schull and today we're going to be talking about why you should be stacking your overdrive pedals if you're not already. This is something that I've been doing for years on just about every iteration of almost every pedal board I've ever had. So today I'm going to take you through my thought process of when I'm putting a board together and picking overdrives to pair with one another. I'm gonna show you some interesting tricks, how you can basically make a fuzz tone with no fuzz pedal just by stacking some different overdrives. And I'm gonna show you some things not to do when stacking overdrive pedals. So without further ado, let's jump in and get started. So today I'm playing through the Revolta Mandata. I've had this guitar for quite a while and I've really enjoyed it. If you're interested in any of the gear that I talk about in today's video, it will all be linked in the description box down below. And here we have my pedal board in its current configuration. Right now, the way I'm running my board is with two overdrive pedals and a boost. There's also a couple of fuzz pedals and the JHS color box, which I'm using kind of as a preamp. But for today's discussion, we're only taking a look at the Echo Park Harmonic Boost in the top right corner, the Vertex Steel String Clean Drive, and the Light Speed from Greer Amps. So from the board, I'm playing straight into my Port City Pearl, which is a 50 watt 6L6 all clean amp. There is zero amp distortion going on. You can hear. nice sparkly fender sort of clean tone and I just have a little bit of reverb coming from the big sky but that's it. So through the years I've used a few different methods for stacking overdrive pedals. The first one is kind of the way that I'm running this board currently which is by using two pretty light gain overdrives and when you stack them together they build to a really really nice thick, creamy, cr crunchy rhythm tone. Really good overdrive. So here's an example of that now. We'll start with the Vertex steel string because it's the first in the chain between the, the steel string and the light speed. So right now I've got this thing set up pretty mild. So you can you can hear the, the overdrive on that is really subtle. And if you dig in, there is your distortion. There's your overdrive that you don't get from the amp by itself. Still pretty clean, but when I kick this on. So that's the first thing that I look for when I'm searching for an overdrive pedal is the touch sensitivity. Does it clean up without me having to touch any volume knobs or anything on my board? Can I clean up my tone just by lightening the touch in my right hand? To me, that's the sign of a really well-designed pedal. If it cleans up like a real amp would, I'm a big fan of it. So that's the steel string. Here is the light speed. This is how I always run it, this tone right here. So you can hear it's adding a little bit more gain to the signal than the steel string was. It's also adding a little bit of clarity and brightness to the top end. Now, the reason for that is because when I combine these two pedals together, I want the second pedal in the chain to add some clarity to help my tone cut through in a mix. So just for reference, here's my clean tone. The steel string. It's the light speed with the steel string. So there we have a really great crunchy rhythm tone. But because both of these pedals are really touch sensitive, if I lighten up. The tone cleans up. That to me feels like a real amp breaking up. And I achieved that from a totally clean tone just by stacking to 
medium gain and light gain overdrives. All right, so another great method for stacking overdrives is what I've done here. So on the board, you can see I've swapped out the Greer Lightspeed with the Paul Cochran Timmy. This is another one of my favorite overdrive pedals I've ever owned. Basically, what I'm doing here is instead of stacking two light gain overdrives, I'm doing a light gain into a medium to heavy gain overdrive. And what essentially that is doing is using the light gain to sort of add an extra color and a little extra harmonic richness, if you will, to the heavier overdrive. So this is clean tone. <laughs> Timmy by itself. God, I love that pedal. I really love that pedal. So you can hear that's basically by itself is as crunchy and as saturated as the two light gain pedals were together. So that's a good starting point if you like more gain in your signal overall. It might be better to go with this method where you're using a heavy gain and a light gain pedal together. So there's the Timmy. Now when I stack the Vertex on top of that right before it, you can hear it's subtle, but it is changing the character of the Timmy just a little bit. It's really more of a feel thing than a tonal thing. Now, if I were running this setup, what I would do is put a boost pedal directly after the Timmy, and that would be my solo boost. Because leading the steel string into the Timmy doesn't actually boost the volume that much, you really need something after that medium to high gain overdrive pedal to bring it out for solos and leads and things like that. Okay, so the third method for overdrive stacking is putting a medium to high gain pedal before a low gain pedal. And this is something that I would actually really recommend if you are a fan of running a higher gain overdrive pedal. The reason being, it eliminates the need for a boost pedal after the stacked chain. So I just threw on the dynamic distortion from Vertex before the light speed, and I'll let you hear it by itself for a second. So for the record, this pedal is kind of unique in that it is a blend of a tube screamer and a fuzz face. If you want to see a full demo of this pedal, you can follow the link here. I did a full in-depth review and demo of this pedal a few weeks ago. But when you have the gain setting a little lower, it's really more so in the tube screamer territory than the fuzz face territory. So you can hear by itself, that's a pretty high gain sound, much beefier than the two low gain overdrives that I had at the beginning of the video. And so this is, you know, your rhythm tone right here. So that's pretty nice. And when you're ready for a solo boost, you kick on the light speed, which is adding a little bit of top end clarity as well as a volume boost and a little gain boost. So that is a good solo tone. You don't need a boost pedal after those two because the light speed in this case is actually acting as my boost pedal. Now let's talk about some things to avoid when you're stacking overdrives. I really don't like stacking two high gain pedals together. I don't think it works. I've tried it. I've tried it with a bunch of different pedals. In my experience, it doesn't yield a good result. The other thing to avoid is getting two of the same style of pedal. There are exceptions to this rule. I think tube screamers work well together if you stack two tube screamers, maybe an 808 and a 909 or something like that. But for the most part, I would recommend experimenting and trying out a bunch of different stuff. There's no real formula that I've found that says this pedal will always pair well with this pedal. 
It really just takes your own ear to tell you what works. And the last thing that I would really avoid is stacking more than two, maybe three overdrives together at once. The reason being, again, as we've talked about, it can make your tone muddy and horrible and nobody wants that. And so as promised, the last thing I'm gonna show you today is how to get a fuzz tone with no fuzz pedals. So I've switched back to the steel string and light speed combination, like I said, because I really like those. And I'm gonna use the Echo Park Boost in front of those two pedals to really overload the circuitry and give me a crazy cool fuzz tone. So I'm gonna turn on both pedals and go back to this stacked drive sound. <laughs> And because I have the boost before the overdrives, if I really crank this boost, so it's slamming the front end of both of those overdrive pedals, it's gonna send them into a different sort of harmonic territory than you would get without the boost. So check this out. So just for reference, I'll turn on the Hoof Reaper so you can hear an actual fuzz pedal. So it's not that far off from a couple of light gain overdrives and a boost. For this to work, I recommend a good clean boost that has a lot of headroom and crank the crap out of it so that it hits those overdrive pedals really, really hard. You can tell it does that thing that a good fuzz pedal does where when you first attack the note, when you hit the transient, it compresses and then the note blooms open. <laughs> Love that. So, who says you need to buy a fuzz pedal? So, there you go guys, that's how to stack overdrive pedals. If you enjoyed today's video, please let me know by liking and subscribing down below this video. Also, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Do you like to stack overdrives? If so, what pedals do you like to use together that maybe we didn't cover here? Also, let me know if you'd like to see something else in these Gear Talk tutorial videos that I'm doing. If you want to support my channel, you can check out the Amazon affiliate links down below in the description box as well. If you click through one of those links and buy something, I get a direct kickback, which helps me in making these videos. Anyways, thanks for watching. That's going to do it for today. I'm Rhett Schull, and remember, there is no plan B. <laughs>